everyone. Thanks for getting up early. <laughs> so today, I want to talk to you guys about what we really need, right? So obviously, we're coming at this with a submitter's perspective. We're all here for a reason. So in the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Um, so today, I want to talk to you guys about our perceived needs and not just generally, but applied to a framework that some of you guys may have heard of, and it's on the screen right now. Um, how many of you guys have heard of Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs? Raise your hand. So this is something I learned early in business school, and I just kind of like it because it's a good framework. It really helps me understand, like, as a human being, like, what are our needs? What are the things that we start with on the foundational level that motivate us? And then you work your way up into other areas, you know, once you feel like you've secured that need. So I want to talk about <clears throat> Maslow's hi hierarchy needs, improve what we really need. So I'm sure you guys can figure out what I'm alluding to there. So if you guys don't know about Maslow's hierarchy needs, this is a, basically just an overview here. So it's a hierarchy, right? So you, with the hierarchy, you start at the bottom and you work your way up. So Maslow created something back in the 1940s uh, in a paper called A Theory of Human Motivation in the Psychological Review. So I'm trying to keep up that theme of therapy and all that kind of stuff, right? <laughs> um, so it's a five-tier model of human needs, often depicted as hierarchical levels within a pyramid. So Maslow wanted to understand what, what motivated people. And he believed that people possess a, a set of motivation systems unrelated to rewards or unconscious desires. Maslow was onto something here, but he didn't quite get it right, in my opinion. So as I go through each level of this hierarchy, I'm sure you guys will see what I mean, because we know that all of our answers are in the Quran. So Maslow stated that people are motivated to achieve certain needs and that some needs take precedent over others. Our most basic need is for that of physical survival. So this will be the first thing that motivates our behavior, and once that level is fulfilled, the next level up is what you'll be concerned with, so on and so forth. So, we can understand that all of these are blessings from God on some level, right? So, keep, keep that in mind. So, the five levels are physiological, safety, love and belonging, esteem, and then self-actualization. So, I want to start with a, a quote before we start, or a verse before we dive in. So 2.164, in the creation of the heavens and the earth, the alternation of night and day, the ships that roam the ocean for the benefit of all of the people, the water that God sends down from the sky to revive dead land, and to spread in it all kinds of creatures, the manipulation of the winds and the clouds that are placed between the sky and earth, there are sufficient proofs for people that understand. So, Let's dive into the first level, physiological needs. So what we're talking about here is food, water, warmth, rest, things that you shelter, things that you really just need to survive before you even can think about anything else, right? So looking through the Quran, we have some things that really under, helps us understand that, yeah, this is something that we need, and this is actually a blessing from God. So 1315, it says, To God prostrates everyone in the heavens and the earth, willingly or unwillingly, and so do their shadows in the mornings and the evenings. So the footnote says, even the disbelievers prostrate. They cannot, for example, control their heartbeats. You need to live, right? Your, your, your heart has to pump. Your lungs, you got to breathe, or else you're not going to live. Or peristalsis. I don't know exactly what that is, but maybe you can You guys can tell me. Uh, the shadows are predetermined by God's uh, design of the solar and lunar orbits and by the peculiar shape of the planet Earth, which causes the four seasons. The absolute precision of the sun-earth relation is proven by the inventions of solar clocks and their shadows. We don't even think about this stuff on a day-to-day -day -day basis, right, guys? Do you think about your heartbeat every day and thank God that my heart is beating? This is something that is crucial to your living. This is something that we should be conscious of, right? And think about these things and be thankful to God. So these are physiological basic life needs. <clears throat> So another verse. So God prostrates everything in the heavens and the earth, uh, everything on earth, every creature, and so do the angels without the least arrogance. The human body, so now we're, we're talking about our physical needs, whether it belongs to a believer or disbeliever, it's just like the last verse, submits to God. 
heartbeats, lungs, peristalsis, all illustrate this submission. So just another re reiteration of that. So another thing, sleeping. We all need to sleep, right? And if you don't, you're probably tired and you're probably not here right now. <laughs> so among his proofs is you're sleeping during the night or the day, and you're working in pursuit of, of his provisions. In this, there are sufficient proofs for those who can hear. So again, I'm reiterating this, talking about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. These are proofs. These are God's blessings. So sleeping is one of them. And then if you look at 221 and 222, we also discuss water. We need to drink water every day. I have some right here. And all kinds of fruit for your sustenance. If you guys had breakfast, we saw we had a whole huge spread of fruits, right? Thank God for that. So these are things that we need. Food. So provisions guaranteed. And these provisions are guaranteed by God. These are blessings from God, and they're given to us if we follow his commands. Uh, 11.6 says, there, are, uh, there is not a creature on earth whose provision is not guaranteed by God. And he knows its course and its final, des final destiny, all recorded in a profound record. Whose provisions are, uh, is not guaranteed by God. I mean, that's something that we all know. We live and he uh, abide by that. Again, we address water. Uh, and in 11.7, it actually talks about how it's perfectly calculated. Food, water, oxygen for the earth's inhabitants, us. Uh, they're precisely calculated and arranged. I mean, these are constantly being reiterated to us, um, and we understand this is, it is a basic life need, and God is the one that provides it. So Maslow also, sorry, let me just catch up here. So he also thought that a physiological need, a very basic need, at some point we all understand, you know, when you get married, this is something that he would do, but to reproduce. So this is something that he also acknowledged, and we know that the Quran also talks about that. And here's another verse that addresses that. So we created you from dust, and that uh, in 3020, uh, you became reproducing humans. So again, proof is in the Quran already. This is something that we do as humans. So moving on, let's just say you've taken care of all of your physiological needs, food, water, warmth, rest, shelter. Now you start thinking about, okay, I have that in place. Let's talk about the safety needs. So I want to feel secure. I have all these things. I want to feel like I can keep these things, that they're going to be there for me in the future. Maslow considered those basic needs. So let's start talking about those. So in 512, it says, God had taken a covenant from the children of Israel, and we raised among them 12 patriarchs. And God said, I am with you. So as long as you observe the contract prayer of Salat, give the obligatory charity to God, and believe in my message and respect them, and continue to lend God a loan of righteousness. I will then remit your sins and admit you into gardens with flowing streams. Anyone who disbelieves after this has indeed strayed off the right path. So the footnote especially points out this, uh, or reiterates this point. If you feel, fulfill the requirements stated in this verse, God will let you know that he is with you. You will have no doubt about it. So this is a concept that is reiterated time and time again, and Various Quran studies, kudbas, speeches yesterday, today, and tomorrow, right? If we're talking about safety, protection, and security, who else are we really talking about, guys? If we're talking about God providing this. And that's exactly what this is referring to for Maslow. You know, people outside this room, um, people that don't believe as we do, they're, they're looking for this in some other manner, right? This isn't something that they believe that God can provide us. After all. So we know in the Quran, again, this is the answer that we can get. Now let's talk about that. So there's verses actually that address if you don't believe that concept, right? This, the header says, they removed their families from God's protection. So in 1428 it says, have you noted those who responded to God's blessings by disbelieving and thus brought disaster upon their own families? Hell is their destiny wherein they burn. What a miserable end. We're talking about safety. This is it. If you don't believe in God, you're bringing disaster upon your family. I mean, it doesn't get more straightforward than that, right? Also, within the safety needs, uh, Maslow addresses order and law, and we know that we refer to Quran as the book of law. And so when you talk about law, we talk about justice, this concept, right? Also addressed in the Quran again, divine justice, 440. God does not inflict an atom's weight of injustice. On the contrary, he ma multiplies the reward manifold for the righteous works, uh, work and grants him from him a great recompense. 
So concepts, again, injustice and 441, we talk about judgment, um, and then obviously you do the final judgment in 442. So within this level, Maslow wanted to point out book of law, order, safety. These are all things that are, are concepts that they were trying to tie back to some type of uh, law, right? But we know, again, going back to the Quran, that is the book of law. So let's say you understand this and you move beyond physiological and safety needs. Now you're seeking out belonging and love needs. So you're reaching out probably from internal things, so keeping yourself safe, uh, fed, warm, and you're reaching out and you're looking for more external indicators, right? Belongingness, love needs, intimate relationship, friends, close family, that's what we're talking about here. So we moved on, moved beyond the basic needs. So we all, we're all here, right? We're all together. We know who the real family is. Again, it's addressed in the Quran. 49.10, the believers are members of one family. You shall keep the peace within your family and reverence God that you may attain mercy. And it's in blue. We're all here. We're all together. We're having a great time, right? Family. So now let's talk about intimate relationships. So we do have that desire within ourselves uh, on some level, and which is why God addresses this in the Quran as well. So in 1672, it says, And God made for you spouses from among yourselves and produced for you, for, for you from your spouses children and grandchildren and provided you with good provisions. Should they believe in falsehood and turn unappreciative of God's blessings? In 3021, it says, Among his proofs is that he's created for you spouses from among yourselves in order to have tranquility and contentment with each other, and he placed in your hearts love and care towards your spouses. In this, there are sufficient proofs for people who think. So I pointed out in another quote, it was sufficient proofs for people who hear. So God is literally giving us the straightforward answer here. It's a sufficient proof. We're now talking about love needs. He placed in your hearts love and care towards your spouses. Again, coming from God. Here's our answer. So that's belongingness and love needs. So let's say you found a wife or a husband. You've taken care of everything else. You're doing well. You get to a point where you want to look at your esteem and you want to kind of pick yourself up, uh, find some sense of accomplishment, find some sense of prestige in whatever you may do. Maybe it's work for you. Maybe it's a hobby whatever. So now we're talking about the psychological needs. But in the Quran, oops, sorry. Yeah, so this level deals with prestige, a feeling of accomplishment, achievement, status, responsibility. It also deals with law and a mutual understanding of morals and values. And so thank God we have the message, right? So we understand what this all means in that context, and we know it comes with a great responsibility. So the ultimate accomplishment here, what we're all striving towards, is to make it to heaven, right? That's the point. So back here on earth, we should be pursuing righteousness. So uh, what does that mean? So we should be striving for higher ranks at our Lord, and we should strive to be righteous, right? That's why we're all here at a conference. Higher ranks for the strivers. 495, not equal are the sedentary among the believers who are not handicapped and those who strive in the cause of God with their money and their lives. God exalts the strivers with their money and their lives above the sedentary, for both God promises salvation, but God exalts the strivers over the sedentary with a great recompense. 496 says, higher ranks come from him as well as forgiveness and mercy. God is forgiver, most merciful. So while people here on earth outside this room are looking for prestige and exaltation in other areas, we're trying to find it in where it, where it counts, where it matters, and that's with God. God tells us again, God exalts the strivers with their money and their lives above the sedentary. People here on earth are looking at this part, the lives, and they're talking about the money, and they're not worried about God. So they're striving in, in their way, in, in, the, in the matter that, thinks, that they think is the correct way, but we know what the right answer is. And we know who, to, who provides it to us. The higher ranks come from God. Forgiveness and mercy is what we're, we're seeking. Righteousness defined. I could highlight this whole thing in underlined bold blue, but I decided not to. <laughs> uh, righteousness is not turning your faces towards the east or the west. Righteous are those who believe in God, the last day, the angels, the scriptures, 
and the prophets, and they give the money cheerfully to the relatives, the orphans, the needy, the traveling alien, to the beggars, and to free the slaves. And they observe, observe the contact prayer of Salat, give the obligatory charity zakat, and they keep their word whenever they make a promise, and they steadfastly per persevere in the face, face of persecution, hardship, and war. These are the truthful, these are the righteous. It's a very long verse, but look at how much it covers. And we're talking about esteem needs. This is a great verse. So another point that Maslow brings up is about reputation. So when you think about esteem, you can have it internally or you want some kind of validation externally from other people. So you know how that works. I mean, we all leave this room, we go back to our jobs and whoever, and we're trying to get promotions or be recognized for this or that. That's what people are, are searching for outside of this room. But we know, again, all dignity belongs with God alone. We should be seeking, seeking repu uh, a higher reputation and striving with God. He's the one that is going to give us this um, level, right? That, that What we're striving for is with God. So they are the ones who ally themselves with disbelievers instead of believers. Are they seeking dignity, dignity with them? All dignity belongs with God alone. And it even addresses that in the, in the prior part, what, where, who we should be address, uh, seeking dignity with. So all dignity belongs to God. We should not pursue pride in the eyes of men, is the point I wanted to make there. So lastly, self-actualization needs. So let's say we, we moved all the way up the pyramid, physiological safety, belongingness, love needs, esteem needs, taking care of the basic psychological needs. Now you're reaching a point where self-actualization is achieving one's potential, including creative activities. So you're having some kind of self-fulfillment. You've already achieved everything else. So I, I researched this one a little bit. Um, and this is defined as achieving one's full potential. And for others outside our community, that, that definition may vary, right? It's going to vary based on what their motivations are. And some characteristics of self-actualizers is that they perceive reality efficiently and can tolerate uncertainty. They accept themselves and others for what they are. Spontaneous in thought and action, problem-centered, not self-centered, unusual sense of humor, able to look at life objectively, highly creative, resistant to enculturation, but not purposely unconventional, concern for the welfare of humanity, capable of deep appreciation of basic life experiences, um, democratic attitudes, strong moral ethical standards. So this is what people are thinking. This is what this means to be self-fulfilled uh, and self-actualized. This is what they're defining as. I'm sure there's millions of white papers and studies on this. But let's talk about this in terms of the Quran again. As submitters, we know that the ultimate potential, again, for us to fulfill is to make it to heaven. That's the top. So what does this mean? How, how do we get there? Well, we, we use this word a lot, and it's called certainty. And it's the attaining of that. So in 13.2, it says, God is the one who raised the heavens without pillars that you can see, then assumed all authority. He committed the sun and the moon, each running in its orbit for a predetermined period. He controls all things and explains the revelations that you may attain certainty about meeting your Lord. In 1598, it says, You shall sing the praises of your Lord and be with the prostrators and worship your Lord in order to attain certainty. The practices of worship are our means of attaining certainty. We have the guidelines. We have the rule book. We know what all these needs are. We know what the blessings are. We're all trying to reach here so then we can make it to heaven, right? So when we talk about fulfillment, this is another concept that we, we address several times, perfect happiness, right? Happiness now and forever, 2215. If anyone thinks that God cannot support him in this life and in the hereafter, let him turn completely to his creator in heaven and sever his dependence on anyone else. He will then see that this plan eliminates anything that bothers him. 535, O you who believe, you shall reverence God and seek the ways and means to him and strive in his cause that you may succeed. So we're talking about self-actualization, fulfillment. Again, directly given to us in the Quran. This is what we need to follow. This plan eliminates anything that bothers him. Another verse, again, perfect happiness. You guys know all these verses, right? <laughs> I like this one, 4131. You will have in it anything you wish for. You will have anything you want. Such is your ultimate abode from a forgiver most merciful. So, 
in conclusion, let's wrap this all up, right? I think these are great verses that to tie it all together. Anyone who seeks the materials of this world should know that God possesses both the materials of this world and the hereafter. God is here seer. And 6162 is actually my, my wife's uh, favorite verse. And I love it too. And I think it wraps it up perfectly. Say, my contact prayer is a lot. My worship practices, my life, and my death are all devoted absolutely to God alone, Lord of the universe. So to reiterate, talking about this hierarchy, Maslow stated that people are motivated to achieve certain needs and that some needs take precedent over others. The most, the most basic need is for physical survival, and this will be the first thing that motivates our behavior. Once that level is fulfilled, we start pursuing the next level up, so on and so forth. This may be true for non-submitters, but as submitters, we know that if we fall in the devil's trap of being preoccupied with this world, we have fallen short of God's kingdom. And so Maslow ignored one sole aspect that we as submitters know as the integral piece of all of our lives here on earth and in the hereafter. So we don't want to worry about any of these needs, right? That's not the point. You guys know the answer. It's God. That's what we really need. Thank you. Questions, comments for Zeb? Some of you guys have heard this before in a kudba, so apologies, but I tried to make it nice. Mashallah, I think great Delilah speech. has a question back there. Who? Delilah. Delilah. Oh. Am I over on time? Are we good? Morning. Um, my question is um, regarding God's cause. Um, I find that this is a phrase repeated in the Quran multiple times, and it's been one that I've tried to kind of figure out what does it really mean? What does it really look like in the day to day? Um, so I'd appreciate hearing your definition of the cause of God. And then the second one is I noticed that God mentions the loan of righteousness. So, um, and I'm a feeling since we're talking about a loan that it might actually relate to the recompense that he's also talking about, which is another word for reward, basically. So um, I just like to hear more about that because we see in the verses a lot of the time God is asking us for to, to do our salat and to do zakat. And those are very concrete, clear things that, you know, there's no question of what those are. But these other two phrases, the loan of righteousness and the cause of God, they're, they're things that I'm still working on making sure I understand. Thanks. Sure. I don't know if I'll answer this directly how the way you want, but I like to think about this in one way. So it all goes back to the great food, and we all know we're here. We were rebels. We're here for a purpose. So I like to use an analogy. God wants us to succeed, and there's multiple point, uh, verses in the Quran that say we need God. God doesn't need us, right, that concept. So I like to think about this as a, a teacher who wants to see his pupils succeed. He literally gives us the answers and says, follow this. So in terms of cause, it's, I look at it in that manner. Here are all the answers. I kind of went through them all. You guys know it all. It's, it's a book. It's called the Quran. Let's follow it. That's what we should be doing here. Uh, the answers are straightforward. Uh, the second question was on loan of righteousness. So mm, I see this as basically, again, we're getting the answer. And we know what righteousness is. It says righteousness defined. That's what we're supposed to just be doing. I don't know if I'm really answering the question, but I, I think that's, that's how it goes. Sorry. Mashallah. Um, the top part is self-actualization, right? Mm -hmm. And mashallah, you mentioned 2215. Um, and I was listening to an audio of um, um, uh, Rashad where he says, uh, submission is the highest form of freedom. So when you 
reach to the level of certainty, it's absolute freedom from any of the baggage of this world, who you are, who you want to be, um, or whether you can get something or not. Because you have totally, com completely surrendered to God's will. And you have 100% faith that he's running everything. You have no control over anything anyway. So the com complete surrender is the highest form of uh, freedom. And that, is, that should be our ultimate goal at the top of the need of uh, whoever's rule that is. <laughs> I, I forgot the name. Anyways, very nice speech, mashallah. Thank you, mashallah.